Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Introducing from Atlantic City, New Jersey, weighing in at 210 pounds, your Italian hero, Joey Image! Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to episode 29 of the podcast. We are live on Periscope right now. We've got 15 people watching, hanging out in the chat room. A bunch of people already asked questions. I've asked them all to hold them until a little bit later. I'm going to uh, just bitch and moan a little bit and then we'll get to the Periscope deal. Um, first of all, how's everyone doing? Um, everyone, I hope, is uh, surviving from the snowstorm. We had um, a little over two feet here in Jersey. And why is my gain so high? It looks like I'm, uh, it looks like on my levels here, like I'm drowning you all out, but I'm not sure. So let's do, how about that? That looks a little bit better. So we had about two feet, maybe two and a half feet here in Jersey. Um, I got lucky though, because my father's friends with a couple of guys that own a landscaping company, they're brothers. And in those, in the summer, they're landscapers, spring or whatever. But in the winter, they have, a, uh, another pickup truck that they use just for plowing and, um, you know, stuff like that. So they actually came over here. That It snowed all day Saturday. So Sunday was really a cleanup day for everybody around here. So they came by Sunday morning, actually early, 1130, maybe 12 noon. And like they, they plowed a whole, my whole driveway. They plowed two spots right in front of my house where I usually park my car. So, uh, you know, we kind of got lucky. I, I shoveled, or I, I'm sorry, not shoveled. I have a snowblower. So I snowblowered my driveway so my parents' cars could get out. But the cars were still covered and, and packed around it and in between them and everything. So I did a lot. I did about an hour and a half just shoveling because I didn't know what time these guys were coming. I just knew they would be there sometime on Sunday. But given the, you know, an off chance that maybe they couldn't have made it because they were doing a lot of other things. Uh, so I, I figured I'll just do it myself as much of it as I can. And, you know, if they show up, cool. If not, no big deal. So uh, I did what I could. And then they came up and finished the job, and it was great, man. And, and like I said, I got lucky because my father is friends with these two dudes. So uh, it worked out nicely for me. Did the same thing last year, uh, except last year I didn't um, I didn't do any of the shoveling, I don't believe. I think my father uh, got the plow guys to come here, and that's it. So anyway, that was uh, Saturday into Sunday. I'm hearing that we're getting another, like, two, I think, not two uh, feet, in, in two days. So Friday, Saturday, supposed to be getting another, I don't know, a few inches maybe. That's what I hear. I don't know how true that is. Um, but anyway, before I get to the uh, quick, uh, the quick, I'm sorry, the Q&A. Man, I can't even talk right now. Before I get to the Q&A I was going to do on Periscope, uh, I just want to bitch and moan a rant about something. Um, there was a conversation going on on Twitter, to, uh, I'm sorry, not Twitter, on Facebook today about that doctor in Miami that screamed and yelled and assaulted the Uber driver, which was... Uh, I think last week sometime, maybe probably a weekend because supposedly she was drunk. But anyway, if you guys didn't see that video, uh, check out the video. You could just, uh, I mean, it went, it went viral. I mean, it was viewed like, I don't know, 6 million times or 8 million times or whatever. So you could just Google, you know, Uber driver, drunk doctor in Miami, something like that. And you'll find it. Uh, it'll probably be the first, I don't want to say it'll be the first result that comes up. It'll probably be the first 30 results that come up. So Essentially, what happened was, just to kind of recap the video, uh, first of all, it starts in progress, so you don't actually see her, like, go up to the car, you know, to start the video. It starts when she's already yelling at the guy. She's yelling and screaming about, she's calling him a fucking piece of shit, and by the way, excuse my language, although there is a uh, disclaimer before every episode of mine, so if you haven't learned by now that I have a potty mouth, then that's not my problem, because again, we're on episode 29, <laughs> so she's screaming and yelling that he's a, the guy's a piece of shit, and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And, and by the way, she's a four-year either neurosurgeon or she's still in school, but she's like apprenticing. I don't know what you call that. Like when a tattoo artist apprentices and he still does his own work, but he's not, you know, fully like full-time yet or fully trained or whatever yet. Uh, she was doing the same kind of thing. I don't really know what you call that. Uh, I think it's a residency now that I think about it. Somebody in my Periscope let me know. So she was a doing a residency or whatever, and uh, she was at a nightclub or a bar or some, some type of drinking establishment, and she called for an Uber ride, and a driver showed up. However, again, she was at a bar. Personally, I'm an Uber driver, so I, I know exactly what's going on. Uh, no, I know exactly what goes on, I should say. She was at a bar, 
And that's obviously a very common place for people to call for Uber rides from. So she called for a ride, went outside, and there was a car there. She assumed it was for her, regardless of the fact that she had just called. Or just not called, but, you know, you do it through the app or whatever. So she she went outside, saw the, the, the Uber guy there, and started yelling and screaming because he refused to pick her up because he wasn't there for her ride. He was there for another customer. Now, again, I'm an Uber driver. If I show up to pick up whoever and that person is not outside yet and someone else comes up and says, I need a ride, I called for an Uber, well, that's too bad. I'm not here for you. You're going to have to pick You're going to have to call, you know, somebody else, wait for your own driver or whatever. But uh, I can't help you. That's just common sense. If, if I go in the store and you show me where the eggs are and I buy bread anyway, it's not my, it's not your fault. It's my fault for being an idiot. So this woman got pissed off supposedly because he wouldn't pick her up and she's screaming, and yelling, you're a fucking piece of shit. I'm, I'm, uh, he said something like you're being really belligerent, blah, blah, blah. And she very sarcastically said, oh yeah, I'm being belligerent. She's like, I, I, I'm five foot tall and I'm, or uh, I'm five foot two and I'm a hundred pounds. I'm really being belligerent right now. And she was. And she got in the guy's car anyway, even though it wasn't her ride. She took all of his personal shit, paperwork, all his, his I mean, I, some of it looked like money to me. I don't know how this dude, I mean, maybe it wasn't because he wasn't running there and diving on the ground to grab it. But she was just throwing shit out the window, smashing shit, CDs she had in her hand. She was throwing, she grabbed the guy's iPhone and she goes, oh, iPhone, bam, threw that outside the window. I mean, at that point, it's an iPhone. I would have crushed her head in the door. But, um, so yeah, so anyway, this is what happened. And then just, this goes on the video, I think is like seven minutes or six minutes, maybe. So this goes on for that amount of time. And then at the end of it, she just says, okay, well, I guess you're not going to give me, it's five minutes, four minutes and 59 seconds. So at the end of it, she just says, I guess you're not going to give me a ride. So I guess I'm done here. Bye. And she gets out of the car and walks away. Like just literally starts walking away down the street. I mean, are you kidding me, dude? I would have hit her in the throat with a brick. I don't hit women. I have never, ever laid my hand on a woman in a violent way. I've laid my hand on some women, but, you know, come on. But not in a violent way, not like that, not in a fist fight, never happened, nothing like that. But this chick just went nuts, and I don't know how this guy kept his composure, he kept his cool. He wasn't screaming and yelling back at her or anything. He he just, like, he was like, I mean, obviously he was annoyed or whatever, but he wasn't yelling or screaming. Uh, there was one point where I don't know if, if he shoved her or she was acting super like erratic and throwing her arms everywhere and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if she stumbled over and fell on her ass or if he shoved her. I don't know. Um, but I mean, it was just ridiculous. Like the way she treated this guy was just complete bullshit. And for, for some, let me just say this, for some reason, this guy didn't press charges, chose not to press charges. Dude, are you kidding me, bro? She took. Again, what I what to me looked like money, and and if you see the video, it looks like money. I might put the, the I'll put the video link actually in the description of this podcast on iTunes and on YouTube wherever you're watching it, and on SoundCloud, um, however you're listening to it. But uh, I, I just I don't understand how how he didn't press charge. Like I said, the one point it looked like money was on the ground. Uh, his paperwork, CDs, his his iPhone for Christ's sake. That's a six hundred seven hundred dollar phone, dude. You're not gonna press charges? Hell no! I'll I'll press charges for you, bro. It's a goddamn iPhone, man. Shit, take the car, leave the phone. <laughs> take the gun, leave the cannolis, um, or leave the gun, take the cannolis. But dude, I don't know, man. This guy is a must be a saint. He he supposedly after the video ended, uh, she actually came back and apologized. The cops showed up. Oh, there's another thing I should mention. And this was shown in the video. There's a cop sitting right at the corner of the street where this happened the entire time, not moving, didn't get out of the car, nothing. So uh, maybe the cop wasn't in the car, but there was definitely a cop car there. But uh, supposedly after this all happened, cops did show up. She came back and apologized. She claims on her uh, her video today, she was on Good Morning America today. Which today is uh, Wednesday. She claims that... She, uh, it was either on today or yesterday. Sorry. She claims that she apologized and paid for the damages. Uh, how does she know? Like, did he already have all the damage assessed and, and all his paperwork and his phone and his CDs and everything? And she said she paid for that bullshit. I want to see receipts. And I don't care. Again, 
there there's a whole thread about this on the hospital's website where this girl works. So if you go on the face not the website, I'm sorry, on the Facebook. So if you go on the Facebook and look up the hospital she worked at, which I don't remember the name of it right now, it's I mean it's on the uh you know, it's all over um Google if you look it up. But if you go on there and you look up the hospital, there's a whole thread obviously of people talking about this, which I don't know. It's it's like I I don't know what people expect. Like there's people in there that are just like you know, surprised that people are pissed off. It's Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. That's what it's called, Jackson Memorial Hospital. And there's people that are surprised that others are pissed off about this. And but there's a, there's whole threads there's a whole thread going on where where people are just like, hey, you know, she should be this and she should be that and blah blah. And I understand that I understand people getting pissed off and 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 hating on her and everything because I think she deserves it. But again, what I don't understand is why this dude is not going to press charges. I don't know. It's just it's nuts. I I just can't figure it out. But she did um, Good Morning America today, and and they said, well, what happened? And for, well, first of all. She goes, oh, it's so hard for me to watch. I can't even watch the whole thing. Oh, go fuck yourself. I can't even watch the whole thing. Are you kidding me? You did it, you fucking idiot. I can't even watch the whole thing. Well, you know what? You should be forced to watch it now. If it's so if it's so embarrassing and shameful for you, you should be forced to watch it on a fucking loop for fucking three or four hours at a time with a half hour break in the middle so you can go cry yourself to sleep. Give me a break. Dude. I, I can't watch the whole thing. It's not like I, I understand it's a big traumatic thing, but not for her, for the friggin' driver. She was the antagonist for Christ's sake. I don't understand where she gets off saying, I can't even watch the whole thing. Well, maybe you should be forced to. How about that? Because if I was the judge, if I was the goddamn Uber driver, I'd be sending DVDs of that thing to her house. I'd ship them out one day after the other, and then this way she would get one every day. <laughs> hey, watch this. It's great. Hey, watch this movie. I'll put movie titles on it. Hey, here's the new Creed movie. Or here's the new X-Files that was on TV the other night. Watch this. Dude, you got to be kidding me. I couldn't watch it. So they, she said, she goes, when people ask me what happened that night, I don't even know what to say. And so the funniest thing was the interviewer guy goes, okay, so what did happen? <laughs> so her excuses were she was drunk, her father was sick, and her boyfriend dumped her. You know what? My father's been sick for a long time. I've had a girlfriend dump me before. I've been drunk. But if you can guess how many times I have physically or verbally assaulted somebody that, A, first of all, wasn't even there to help me because I didn't call them. Again, she didn't call that driver. She called a different driver. So you know how many times that's happened? Zero. Because I'm a, I'm a fucking decent human being. I wish I could say it was more than decent, but, you know, I got to deal with the hands that have been dealt to me. <laughs> so... Yeah, but I mean, because I'm because I'm a good person, okay. Well, I don't understand like how, you know, and 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 kudos to the guy in, that interviewed her when she said, "Oh, I was drunk and my father's sick and my boyfriend broke up with me. He just broke up with me that night and then he left. So I went outside to call a car, or I'm sorry, I called a car and went outside to get a ride. That's what she said. So so this just happened. She looked so upset. Let me tell you, she was giggling and laughing like a fucking belligerent idiot. She looks so upset, yeah. She was really down in the dumps. Give me a break. And then, again, the interviewer says to her, oh, that's not really an excuse. You know that, right? And she's like, there's no excuse for how I acted. I don't know. I just don't get it, how that happens. And she just blows it off as, because, you know, in my opinion, and again, this is my opinion, this is my show. If you disagree with me, I don't care. You're allow- you, you know, you're, you're very, very much allowed to disagree with me. But it it won't change my stance, so that's okay. I mean, you know, I I welcome all discussion about this, but I have my my, you know, I have my feelings and and my opinions. And again, uh, I am an Uber driver, so I I do see it from that guy's point of view. And I've been drunk a million times, so I see it from that point of view too. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I understand that there's violent drunks, but it's just like this is a complete like uh, stranger to her. Like literally just some, it's just some guy sitting outside in a car and she felt that, you know, it was appropriate to physically and verbally attack him. You know, I don't know. Uh, so like I said, my father's been sick for a while. I've been drunk before and I've had girlfriends break up with me. One of them, she said my boyfriend of two years had just broken up with me. So he left the bar that night cause they had some fight, whatever. You know what, dude, 
I've been in uh, uh, relationships longer than two years that have ended. I have never attacked anybody. It's just you're a lying bitch. That's the thing. And then I think the thing that may have pissed me off the most was that at the end of this interview with Good Morning America, they said you should be apologetic and blah, blah, blah. She said, yes, I did apologize to the guy. And I feel bad about what happened. And she said, maybe people can use this as a lesson because you never know when, if this is going to happen or if someone's going to get this crazy, you never know when someone's going to be around to tape it. That's what she said. Not, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this because you hurt yourself or other people around you or you'll hurt some random stranger that has nothing to do with you. No, no. You should just not do it because there might be someone filming. Are you fucking kidding me? How you shouldn't do it because you're a fucking human being and so is that fucking guy you disrespected. How about that? And again... Like, I, I want to call this guy and be like, dude, why would you not press charges, dude? Like, you don't want to get her in trouble? Give me a break. And and she claims this will never happen again and it's never happened before. I got to be honest, man. I don't know if this will ever happen again, but I got to say that this has probably happened at least once. Maybe not, you know, publicly. Maybe, you know, in private or her and that boyfriend of two years that supposedly exists. Maybe maybe they had an argument one night and, and she went nuts on him. But it, it really it really annoyed me that she said that this shouldn't happen because someone might be taping. First of all, taping? What are we, in 1998? Who the hell tapes anything? Everything's recorded on fucking phones now. But, like, really, that's why you shouldn't get drunk and belligerent and stupid and assault people and attack people? Because someone might be filming it? Not because that's just a shitty thing to do or because the guy didn't deserve it or because, you know, you're a nice person. No, no, because somebody might see it and it might go viral. That's what she's worried about. I hope she fucking loses her job. She's suspended right now from her. Exactly. All assume that all people are filming. Thank you, Anthony. Very, very good point. Um, she's suspended from her job right now at the uh, the hospital. I don't understand why she's suspended. She should have been fired. As soon as that video was released and her identity was released, she should have been fired. Uh, like, not a second early, you know, not a second later. That's it. Boom. You're gone. Because I'll be completely honest with you. I don't want someone, or I should say, I wouldn't want someone that mentally unstable. She's a neurologist, for Christ's sake, or a neurosurgeon. She does brain surgery. That's what she's, like, you know, in school for. I don't want anyone that's that mentally unstable working on my brain ever. And, you know, a lot of you know that I've actually agreed to donate my brain to Chris Nowinski's Concussion Legacy Foundation at Boston University for studies for CTF, for concussion, for brain injuries, and, and you know, CTF syndrome and stuff like that. I, I don't want anyone like that messing with my brain. I'll take it one step further. I don't, I wouldn't go to a hospital that employs someone that uh, mentally unstable. And again, she she might be the sweetest girl in the world. She might be the nicest woman in the world. But I, you know what? This is your first impression? Get the fuck out of here. Never talk to her. Would never deal with her. Would never be a patient of hers. Would never go to that hospital. I don't care if I'm in Miami and my leg falls off and my 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 head falls off. If the if if my head, if I was in Miami and I was 11 feet from that hospital, and I knew that she was working that day, and my brain fell out of my head, you better scotch tape it back in, because I'm not letting her fucking touch it. Hell no, man. That's crazy. I don't know. So, whatever. I, I think I've ranted enough about this. It's just it's just ridiculous that she's like, well, you know, my father was sick, my boyfriend broke up with me, and I was drunk. Well, maybe you shouldn't be a belligerent, irresponsible, stupid asshole. How about that? How about that? And then, like... And then, like, uh, you know, she she's like, well, I'm very ashamed. She said she was ashamed a thousand times. I really got to be honest. If this was not caught on video, I really don't think that there would have been an apology. Like, if this didn't go viral and if the public didn't see this, what would what would have happened? Nothing. She She just would have gotten away with it. That's it. Nothing would have happened at all, I don't think. There's one thing about... Uh, about alcohol and, and about drunkenness and, and even getting high that I, I've just never understood. And again, I've been drunk a thousand times. I've been high a thousand times. I don't understand how people cannot be aware of their actions. I, I've never been that. I've been drunk to the point where I've blacked out, or I'm sorry, where I've passed out. And then the next day, you know, didn't remember certain things, or I've passed out and or 
you know, blacked out memory wise and just not remembered things or, or done shit or said shit that I didn't remember. But at the time, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I know that I'm throwing a punch at an Uber driver. If I'm punching an Uber driver or, or a slap or, you know, shoving the guy or whatever. Like, I know that I'm in the car with his iPhone in my hand and I'm about to throw it out the window. I, don't, I just don't see how you can not know that that's what you're doing and then blame it on alcohol. Why, if, if she was that drunk, why is she not suing the bar, you know, for, for not cutting her off? That's happened before. That sounds like the most ridiculous and asinine suggestion I can come up with, but it's happened before. People have sued bars for not cutting them off when, when they, they should be, you know, not drinking anymore, and they've won. My, my, my father was sick, and I was drunk, and my boyfriend broke up with me. Look at you. That's your first impression to the world outside of Miami. No shit your boyfriend broke up with you. You're a mental case. That's why maybe your your first uh you know, your first brain surgery patient should be yourself. <laughs> maybe you could fix whatever the hell's going on up there. Because god damn, man. I mean, something's gotta something's gotta give. I, I mean, this is a chick that after that video, she should be like, you know, working construction in Hoboken or something, not being a goddamn neurosurgeon. Anyway, enough about that chick. I'm fucking tired of hearing about it. Let's go to the uh, Periscope Q and A. Uh, what do y'all got for me? Anybody got any questions or whatever? I'm uh, I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not thrilled with this chick, so I kind of want to stop talking about it. So what do we got going on? What do we got in Periscope? Come on, we got dead air here. We can't have dead air. We can't have silent dead air. What do we got? What's my best tech experience, Anthony Metagoni? Uh, I don't know. That's kind of an odd kind of an odd question. My best tech experience, probably when I first got my first computer, I was five years old. It was a Commodore 64. It was just that big keyboard with the 1541 hard drive that hooked up via the red, yellow, and white RCA cables. So I just plugged it into a television. Uh, it was downstairs in my basement on the top of the kitchen table. We didn't, we, there's, there's two kitchens in my house. So the one in the basement we only use for holidays and stuff like that. So I really didn't get used all that often. So I put it on there. It, it was amazing to me because there was so much stuff I could do with this little keyboard that I didn't know was possible. For example, like I, I could play games and it was just like, wow. Like I obviously I, I had like a ColecoVision and television, uh, Atari, Nintendo. So I, I knew I could do that. But that's like, you know, this to me was not a home console. It was something different. So I, I could use that. I could do that. And at the same time, I could write my own stuff, you know, basic programs or whatever in, 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 uh, you know, basic or, or whatever. I could, you know, I could do that myself, write my own stuff. I had books, the stuff that I was learning in school. Once I got to be, you know, 12, 13, we were doing computer stuff in school. Um, but that's probably like my first, my coolest experience. Cause that's what got me started. And that's what got me in love and passionate about technology. You know, as you, as you know, Anthony, uh, how much I love tech. So that's kind of, I guess that's gotta be it. What's the best non-chain Mexican restaurant you've eaten at? Oh man. Is there any non-chain Mexican? Thing? Oh, a yellow place in Santa Ma- uh, sorry, in Manhattan beach, California. I don't know the name of it, but anyone that's listening to this from Manhattan beach, it might not even be there anymore. I don't know. My brother lived on Grandview Avenue. 2216 Grandview Ave. So if you go down the street and you make a right onto the main road, uh, I guess it goes, if you go straight, it goes down to the pier in uh, Manhattan Beach. Uh, it's like the second or third right turn you make, and it's right on the left hand side. It's a yellow Mexican place. I don't remember the name of it. Best Mexican burritos I've ever had. Uh, so I don't know the name of it, but that's got to be it. If not, if not that place, then uh, El Cid's in Paramus, New Jersey. I think that's a Mexican place. Um, they have a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, steaks and stuff like that too, but I like that place also. Your thoughts on Owen Hart and Bulldog getting the Hall of Fame snub again this year? Uh, well, it's only January. Uh, I don't know that they've gotten a snub. It's January twenty seventh. There's still what, a month and a half before before it happens, or a month and I don't know a couple weeks before it happens. Um, they haven't announced everyone in the Hall of Fame yet, so I have no idea. Uh, also, Owen Hart is not a snub. Uh, her, his wife has to allow it, and so far she hasn't. So you can't blame WWE for for that. It's not them. It's her. It's been her for years, supposedly. So I don't know. But uh, again, I, they haven't announced everybody yet, so I don't know who's not going to be in it. What's your favorite Wawa hoagie? Um, I don't think I've ever gotten a, a hoagie from Wawa, actually. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. I got a roast beef and switch a couple weeks ago from the new Wawa by here. Um, it's not bad. It's just the 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 night that I went, I guess it was might have been an off night because I asked for mayo and I didn't get any. So that's the only time that that's ever happened. I'm I'm a big uh, speaking of hoagies though. I had Jimmy John's today. Oh man, Jimmy John's is good stuff. Thank you, Brock Lesnar. 
Because Jimmy John's is good stuff, man. They um and they deliver too, which is really cool. So when I'm at work, there's a Jimmy John's 1.2 miles away, and I just I don't even go there. I like today 11:30. I go I hit I hit the app and I go, hey, I need this, and they send it over. It, it took about 20 minutes, but I you know my my lunch time is from 12 noon to 1 p.m. So 11:30, I hit them up, I order whatever, and they'll and you can order just one sandwich and deliver that. Like that's crazy, but it probably costs more in gas than to go back and forth, back and forth to my to my work than for them to for that they're making off the sandwich. But whatever, it's cool. Um, but yeah, so I had Jimmy John's today. It was great. I may have it again tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. But it was really really good today. What else we got? Come on, folks. No dead air allowed. I'll just edit out the data. What are your top three ways to have burgers? Rumble, what are you doing now for work? LOL, what is your dream mania card? All right, let me do those in order. Top three burgers. Bacon Swiss burger is my favorite all-time, my all-time favorite burger. Also, pizza burger, because I'm Italian. I I think I'd say my third is probably a double cheeseburger, just a plain old double cheeseburger. What am I doing now for work? Oh, um, I am a temp for a, uh, a, it's just an office job. I'm, I'm, I'm temping right now. Nothing exciting. Company that makes um, video, uh, TV cameras, television cameras, broadcast cameras for for news stations and MTV and stuff like that. So that's my that's my job right now. Not really fun. Not really anything exciting. Uh, rumble. What about it? Are you asking me if I want to rumble? <laughs> uh, I saw the rumble, the Royal Rumble. Yes. Thoughts? Uh, I thought it was a great show. Great show from start to finish. I enjoyed every every all of it. I know people are complaining about the finish. That's their problem. This is what happens, and this seems to happen every single week on Raw. People complain that they want something different. So, something different happened. Triple H wrestled on a pay-per-view, and he won. People complained. Uh, had had that not happened and Roman Reigns won, people would have complained. Because they've been complaining about Roman Reigns since before he won the title. So, again, something different happened. Triple H worked a pay-per-view, which hasn't happened in a while. Uh, since WrestleMania, I think. And then, people complained. Then, if Roman Reigns would have won, they still would have complained. Uh, that's why I don't watch them anymore. I'm sick of them. Alright, good. That's your choice. Uh, you're being smart about it. See, the thing is, I don't like um, Sex in the City, for example. I don't like The X-Files, okay? The X-Files returned to television recently. I don't like The X-Files. I don't watch it. But what people do with WWE is they don't like it. They watch it still, even though they don't like it. And then they bitch and moan about it. Well, you don't like it anyway. So I don't understand how you can call yourself a fan of something you do nothing but complain about week after 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 week. If you don't like it, and it's so terrible that you are going to bitch and complain online during the entire show every week for three hours. Stop fucking watching. Why is that not common sense? I don't understand. Do you like watching babies get their fucking eyeballs ripped out by rabid fucking midgets or wolverines? Or, I don't know, do you like watching, uh, uh, you know, old people fuck? Uh, you know, no. So then don't watch it. You don't watch other stuff you don't like. Why would you watch that? I don't understand makes no sense like I, I'm, not, I'm not a football fan so i don't watch football and then say oh the giants fucking suck the jets suck the fucking eagles suck i don't watch them i don't watch any of them i don't care about it i, I don't i don't understand An- another thing that i don't think people realize is the fact that when people bitch and moan about wrestling and then claim to still be fans they just make the business itself look bad because outsiders that aren't fans are going to say hey if this, if, you know, this sports fans don't even like, don't, you know, like their quote unquote, I should say, their quote unquote fans don't even like the shows. Why would anyone else like the shows? You know, if even their fans don't like it, why would they call themselves fans? And to me, I think that that puts a black eye on, on I shouldn't say it puts a black eye. It increases a black eye that may already be there. Uh, but I just don't understand people bitching and moaning and complaining about everything. So I, I don't know. Uh, NXT is putting TNA out of business. All I'm saying, uh, well, NXT is not its own company, so it won't be NXT putting anybody out of business. Um, NXT is WWE and people have been saying that for years. I'm not saying TNA is the greatest thing in the world. I'm not even saying that they're good. I know that nobody considers them competition, but if they were going to go out of business, they would have probably by now, if they've been around 13, 14 years now, they're somehow doing something right. That even when they're in what looks to be their lowest periods, they're still getting picked up by other networks. They're making a ton of money overseas. They're just they just freed up uh, a few hundred thousand dollars a year um, from three guys that are no longer there. I forget what happened. Um, I think one of them is Kurt Angle retiring. 
like after this year, they're gonna uh, obviously not have to pay him or whatever. And then there was something I heard recently, like two other guys that left or are leaving that that frees up their salaries as well. And I said this a couple of weeks ago, but uh, TNA Live is a great show. Uh, my girlfriend and I went. I don't know, three weeks maybe it was, something like that. It's like live, it's a di- completely different show. It's Sometimes it's baffling to me that it's that different from television to their live events. But their shows are just great. And and if what happens at the shows translated to television that easily, they may be doing better television-wise. Um, I don't understand why it doesn't and what the difference is. And I think one thing that hurts it is everyone burying TNA because you know if you're if you're not already a TNA fan you're not going to become one because all you see is people bad mouthing I never see people giving them a chance other than myself and that's not because I know people there and I, and I don't want to see people out of a job uh you know it's not because I'm trying to get myself a job because I'm done it's because I try to be fair you know it's it's like like Shane Helms did a post on I think it was Facebook or Twitter a couple of weeks ago he wrote this I, I think it was on Twitter actually he said there's a lot of people that are burying WWE and or TNA, but meanwhile, Grumpy Cat had more TV time than them. Well, he's right. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of them are, are workers, a lot of them are, are independent wrestlers, are burying both companies, and they haven't done anything, which is part of the reason why I don't bury TNA. I don't bury WWE. I don't shit on NXT. Because what the fuck have I done? A couple of VFW halls and some high schools for 15 years? Big deal. It's like, you know, I, I don't get it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trash talk people that are doing better than me. It doesn't really make sense. Shane Helms, so glad TNA is giving him a chance. Oh, I love Shane. He's a, he's a great dude. What's the worst band you've heard? Ah oh, man, what a what a random topic that is. The worst band I've ever heard. I have no idea. They have great in ring talent, but no one can cut a promo. Uh, incorrect. Kurt Angle cuts a hell of a promo. Matt Hardy cuts great promos. Who else? Uh, Jesus, I don't even know who else is there. Uh, beautiful people, they're always doing good. Um, Dream Mania card? Man, I... Pff, Jesus Christ, you got me. I, I don't have a lot of... Um, I haven't watched a lot of WWE the past probably six months. I've watched... I, I, I've, I'll watch the pay-per-views, but other than that, I think I've only seen two or three Raws, maybe, and not even in their entirety. Dream Mania main event, I can give you that. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing... Like, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Ambrose and Triple H, like, one-on-one. Favorite ice cream, Rocky Road. I missed the last couple of questions. Uh, guys, when you when you type in Periscope, it only stays on the screen for 10 seconds. So if I miss it, I'm sorry. You're going to have to just retype it. And there's no scroll back feature on Periscope either. Hey, Periscope, if you guys are listening, you really got to add a uh, scroll back feature. It's really kind of silly that it doesn't exist. Uh, guys, I'm going to go for five more minutes. Then I'm going to cut it off because that will be about 45 or 40 minutes around there. What do you want to see WWE do with AJ Styles? I'd like to see AJ. I I don't think uh, AJ Styles is re- obviously ready yet for the WWE World Title picture, but I'd like to see him. Uh, I'd like to see him and Kevin Steen. I'd like to see Styles and Ambrose uh, for maybe the Intercontinental. That would be kind of cool. Um, AJ was in WWE years ago. No, he wasn't. He wrestled a couple of matches on Velocity. He wasn't in in the company. Means he has a signed contract. He never had a contract. This is his first time there. Just like Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe wasn't there years ago either. He just worked one or two dark matches on Velocity or on Heat or Livewire. But that doesn't mean that you're with the company. Well, I've enjoyed Cena Taker at Mania. I, I don't think so. I hate to say this, but I don't I don't think so. I'm not a big John Cena guy. I, I shouldn't say that. Wrestling-wise, I'm not a big John Cena guy. Business-wise, I love John Cena because when he's doing great, when he's on top, when the business is doing good, you know, when WWE is doing good and he's on top, He's their biggest money maker, so it's bringing more eyes to the product, which means everyone from all the all the levels down are still getting that that uh I don't know what you call it um reaping the benefits. So when when the business itself is doing good, that goes all the way down to the independent level. It just kind of cascades down. But as for the question, I, I don't know if I if I'd really be into like an Undertaker Cena match. Last question: Who is the one wrestler that got me into wrestling? Uh, I'd say probably Ric Flair. I think Ric Flair, because when I was a young kid, I just wanted to fuck a bunch of girls and have a bunch of money and be on TV. And that's what he did. 
That was the Four Horsemen deal was we have all this women. We have all this, you know, booze. I have this plane and a, and a car or whatever and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of what I wanted and all this money. Um, do I think Roman Reigns deserves his spot right now? Yes. Uh, I do think that Roman Reigns deserves his spot right now. I mean, he's not champion anymore. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, if people are, are not happy about that, well, you, now you can be happy about it or weren't happy about that, I should say. But I do think that... Uh, I would like to see Roman Reigns and Triple H. I, I'm one of the few people that, if if not the only one, that wants to see Reigns and Triple H. Not for the wrestling ability, because I'm not sure that, that it would be like a five-star match or whatever. But I'd like to see that because Triple H is so fucking good and Roman Reigns is very mediocre. You only learn, you only get better, and you only improve from people that are better than you, from wrestling people that are better than you. So I think if Roman Reigns and Triple H worked a match together, Roman Reigns can do nothing but soak up a whole bunch of knowledge. You know, so he can he can learn so much from Triple H. And, I mean, I'd like to see them go 12 to 15 minutes. He can only improve from that. So I'd like to see maybe like a two or three match series with both of those guys where Reigns hopefully soaks up everything that he learns and maybe picks up things and, and uh, you know, can improve. I mean, it's a it's a known fact that you're only going to improve if you're working with people that are better than you. If he pays attention and if he learns something and he absorbs it, that would be great. He can only improve. Who's my coolest Uber passenger? Uh, probably the Indian guy that I told the story about a few episodes ago. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it because I already told the whole story, but you can go back and check it out. It says in the description, like a really cool Uber story. So when you go to download the podcast, you'll know which one that is. Um, guys, I'm going to do maybe two more questions and then I'm going to have to take off. It's been almost 45 minutes. I have to edit this down to hopefully 30 minutes. What's your all-time favorite tag team? Demolition. Number one of all time, man. Those guys were badass. Um, I liked them when they were babies. I liked them when they were heels. I've never met them. I always wanted to meet them and always want to work with them. Um, but I never got the chance. I liked them when they were two guys. I liked them when it was three guys. Who's my favorite baseball player? I don't really have. Dude, I, I really haven't followed baseball very closely other than this past season because the Mets being the World Series, but since like the strike in 96 or whatever it was, um, that strike really pissed me off, and I, I kind of stopped, really stopped watching. My favorite GTA Five moment, is that what you just said? I, I don't know. I don't have a favorite moment in the in the game. I like playing every night as much as I can with like my crew, me, Dave, Kevin, Danny, Josh, Chris, uh, Josiah, Alex. There's uh, I think there's seven or eight of us that play. Uh, what is my take on AJ Styles? I like AJ Styles. I met him once. I like him when he was backstage before, like before the um before the Raw match against Jericho. He looked really small, and that kind of surprised me because when he was standing next to Jericho, it looked like Jericho was kind of like up here and Styles was down here. It almost looked like an independent guy in there with a WWE guy, and I really, really hate to say that, but he looked small. I know he's not a big, jacked up, you know, six foot ten dude. Um, I guess I just, I thought he was taller. That sounds probably shitty, right? Uh, but no, I'm sorry. But, but, but as a worker, I think he's great. Uh, he, he's really great. And, uh, I enjoy watching his matches. I like watching some of that high flying stuff. I can't get too, I can't watch too much of it, but I like watching some of that. And, uh, that's actually what I'm getting into right now. Do you like his style of wrestling? I, I can't watch too much of that stuff because I, I really kind of like uh, more um, actual mat grappling and mat wrestling, but I do enjoy watching it. How involved with the business am I? Well, I've been a pro wrestler for over 16 years now, so I'm very involved. Uh, you know, I, I, I've done that. I retired in June of 2015 due to some pretty bad injuries. Other than that, I've done writing. I've done booking. I've done talent scouting at other shows. Uh, I've done some storyline development stuff. Um, I've, I've helped guys with like gimmicks and characters and stuff like that. Uh, so I've done a lot in the business. And now I've done podcasts for the business. So now that's all I can do because, again, I was injured uh, badly. I broke my neck. I busted up my spine. And I busted up my left hip. So I can't. I, I'm too far injured to, to continue. So I had to stop wrestling in June. Um, I've never done anything with any of the big companies. I never did anything on TV for, for WWE or, 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 or you know, whoever, TNA or, or, or ROH or whatever. I've been backstage at their shows. I know people that work for basically all the, all the major companies, but I've never like done stuff for them. Uh, I've been, you know, like, like I said, my girlfriend and I went to TNA a couple of weeks ago and I was backstage there. Uh, 2CW. I love 2CW. I'm really not happy that they're done. They are the number one company in New York, I, I think. Uh, only only number two, or I should say, number two is Excite Wrestling. Excite Wrestling is a company that I am in love with. 
and loved working there, loved my time there. When, when, when I think of the fact that I'm no longer wrestling, I get super depressed. But the fact that I'm no longer wrestling specifically at Excite Wrestling, Ace Wrestling, Grand Slam Wrestling, companies like that, that really kind of bothers me. If you didn't get injured, would you still be wrestling? Dave, of course I would. Come on, man. You know that. I'd still be in Pennsylvania every weekend. Yes, if I didn't get injured, I'd still be wrestling. But I think the fact that I can't work for those companies, that bothers me as well. Uh, 2CW is such a great company, man. Josh did a great, great job with that company, man. I mean, that place is awesome. If you ever get a chance to check out any of their stuff, you know, look up their stuff on YouTube, check out their DVDs. 2CW is is what independent wrestling should be, especially in New York, as like a stepping stone to WWE or TNA or Japan. I have friends that, that were very big names in 2CW that went to Japan and worked in Japan in 2015. So yeah, they're one of the best out there. I would say they are the best in New York. Them, 2CW and Excite are probably the best in New York. 2CW is not around anymore. Excite is still very, very alive. Uh, I'd say they're probably the best in New York. The best in Jersey, uh, which I don't really keep up with, but the best in Jersey would probably be Ace Pro Wrestling and probably Jersey All Pro. Although Jersey All Pro, uh, unfortunately, Fat Frank passed away a few months ago. And uh, so they're not running like every weekend or whatever, but um, those are the top, my opinion, in Jersey. And the top three in Pennsylvania, I would say, is Grand Slam Wrestling. Backbreakers Training Center, which is run by Justin Glory, it's a training center, but they do like student shows there. So I, I would consider them uh, one of the top three in Pennsylvania and probably Sanctuary. And, well, and Ring of Honor, of course. Ring of Honor is Pennsylvania based. And I'm so I missed whatever the comment was that just popped up, but whatever it was, if you retype it, that'll be my last question. Uh, I'm almost at 50 minutes here, and it's it's much longer than I'm hoping than I hoped. I'm gonna have to try to cut this down to 30, 35 if I can. So uh, before I get to whatever the last question was, before it's retyped on the screen, I want to thank everyone at Periscope for hanging out. Everyone at the news that put that story about the uh, the idiot doctor from Miami on there, that would be awesome. What's the podcast called? This one, uh, That Image Guy. If you go on twitter.com slash joeyimage, facebook.com slash realjoeyimage, or youtube.com slash joeyimage, uh, it's on iTunes, it's on YouTube, it's on SoundCloud. It's on threeropes.com. It's on 1640PWPR. You can find me all over the place. And you can also check out prowrestlingtees.com slash Joey Image. Buy a shirt. There's two new ones in the works right now. Uh, I'm not going to say what they are, but they're going to be real hot shirts. Um, so check those out. You can email me, joeyimage at gmail.com. Send me all your hate mail. I'm cool with it. And again, uh, I want to thank everyone for hanging out, especially the people in Periscope. And the last question, what is one of my pet peeves? Uh, people that don't speak English. Um, and I don't mean that as foreigners. I mean, people that English is their first language, but they still use words like bay and, uh, on fleek and crap like that. Just speak English, dude. Cause it's like, you know what? And and then when those, those people complain that like if if you say what is what does bay mean, they get all like attitude with you. Well, it means this, blah blah blah. Like you know what? You wouldn't have to explain yourself if you just fucking spoke English. If you just spoke English in the first place, people wouldn't ask what you were saying. So please, just I don't know. I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of like heat on Twitter about this, or people are gonna listen to this and go, "Yo, man, that shit was on fleek, yo." Okay, great. I don't even know what that means. And yes, I do know bay means poop. So you can keep keep calling your boyfriend Bay because that makes a lot of sense and that shows how much you don't care about him. <laughs> uh, it's it's okay. It's just I, I I don't know. I'm just not a slang guy. I guess I just always was yelled at for speaking incorrectly or you know in slang in school and now I'm kind of like ugh, just speak English. And you don't have to explain everything. I think that's another thing. I hate when people explain themselves and it just goes on and on and on. Like get to the point right away. Please, I don't have all day to listen to you explain things. So when people use slang and then I have to say, I don't even know what that means. And they're like, oh, well, it means this and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'll use this instead of that. Well, just if you said it correctly in the first place, then I wouldn't have to ask. And I would know what you're talking about. And I don't have to sit there and listen to your stupid explanation. All right. <laughs> On that note, this was a very happy um, episode. I would like to thank everyone for listening, for downloading, for subscribing. I'm sure I will lose some subscribers after this, but that's okay. I don't care. Um, or I shouldn't say that. I do care, but whatever. You want to go, go. And I will talk to you all on the next episode, which is 30 number 30. 
I hope you all are ready. See you later. This has been a presentation of the Three Ropes Media Network. For more, find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash three ropes or visit us at three ropes.com.